Hello community and welcome to the Block and Load Map Editor tutorial. I'm Jono, one of the community managers here on Block, and I'm joined by senior level designer, Googliwa. Hello. Hello, Googly. And in this introduction to Map Editor, we'll be showing you the basics of how to get your custom made arenas in working order and ready to play and share with the rest of the Block and Load community. So we're just loading into a brand new arena now, and we'll show you what you have to work with. So here we have uh, a new map that we just created, and we're going to be opening this file, and this is going to show you how we create a map in Block and Load. Fantastic. So as you can see, when you first load into the editor, you're presented with a blank canvas that you can use to build the arena of your dreams or even your nightmares. But first things first, the basics, Googly. So what we have here uh, over on the right, you have uh, options that have all been predetermined for different heights, lengths, uh, widths. So you can have a small, medium, large, uh, large, long. Um, and down here we have the block layers. Uh, what's going to happen here is when we uh, generate the map, it's going to build from the ground up. So you can change these values on the right if you want, or we can keep them as given to you by us. These are the recommended, so you can go in and change these. It's entirely up to you. So all I need to do is just press the generate map button. And as you can see here, it's showing you exactly how much space you've got what type of materials we've got in there already, what side the teams are on, and we're going to go to continue. So here we are. This is the editor. It's Our first arena, Googling. I know. It, it's, it, it can turn into an absolute chaos. So <laughs> let's, let's see where we go. So I noticed in the top left there we have a toolbox. Would you like to quickly take us through those tools? I will do. But as you can see here, I'm just showing you at the moment the basic movement. So if I hold down the mouse wheel and use WASD, uh, you can see that I'm moving up and down, left and right. Now, if I hold shift like we do in Game to Run, it speeds it up much, much quicker. You can use them uh, back forwards and back. So after a while, you get used to the, the movement. So what we've got up here on the tools, we've got the basic building brushes. Uh, we've got the vert tool, which we use for sculpting. Uh, we've got the replace tool, so you can replace materials. You've got a damage uh, applier, so you can make broken blocks. You've got a colour brush, so you can paint blocks. You've got your units thing for your game objects, so you've got all of the stuff you need in there to create a map. Uh, you've got a tree brush. You've got a copy and paste. You've got mirror tool. Uh, we've got resize. And we've got map settings. And over here is save. You've got uh, even more editor settings. And do we need this one? Screenshots and settings. That settings here are in your in-game. This carries over what you've, settings you've got in block and load. So whatever you've got in there, it will remember that. So we don't really need to change that just yet. Fantastic. So the tools are something that we're going to be getting quite familiar with as we progress through the map editor. But first things first, there's some key ones that are really important. Um, so specifically default content, because without default content, you can't have an arena. So would you like to take us through what the default content yeah. contains? So as you might have noticed in the corner here, um, as I can move this around, you can have a, have a look anywhere you want. It's just going to show you exactly what you're going to need to, pu to publish a map. Uh, in our default game mode, we have a spawn point at each end, and we have an objective at each end. Now, you can add in more objectives, but for the moment, just to do, show you the basic, you can just do this. Now, what's going to happen is the, the tool is going to tell you when you've done these things. So you click on the units. In here, you've got your respawn pad. should already be selected because it's the first on the list. And we go like that, and that, that will chuck that in. And as you might notice on here, it's telling me that one out of the one's been done at the moment. So that's cool. So you even get a tick list so you don't forget. Yeah, and it won't publish the game until you've actually got these right anyway. So once you've done it the first time around, it, it becomes like ingrained in you after a while. And then we'll put in our objective, which is there. Now, one thing I'm going to do before I, I, I move on to the next step is show you a little tip that you need to have on any map, which is basically to put in a metal plate underneath your uh, objective. Now, the reason for doing this is that when you're trying to destroy the terrain, there'll be nothing under there to support the objective, and it'll just be floating. So we don't want that. And also, with your uh, respawn area, you're going to be wanting to put a metal base under there so when the terrain gets destroyed, the players aren't going to fall to their deaths. That would suck when you respawn. It does. Uh, now, with the building tools, as you can see here, I'm using a mouse wheel to scale. This is a flat plane. Uh, this one here will do a solid block. And this one here enables me to do different type sizes. So I've just shown you very, very quickly like you know, how we can scale and use a brush. 
and over here where the block pieces are, you just drag them into the block palette and you can use them where, whenever you want. So this would allow you to quick select different types of terrain, different yep. blocks, and quickly apply them rather than having to faff around in the, in the menu. Yes. Uh, and also, you may have noticed as well, is like if I press left click, it adds. If I right click, it, del it deletes. First it giveth, then it taketh away. Yes, it goes, it comes. There we go. So you can kind of sculpt very, very quickly with this tool. And then if we go into the mirror section here, it's going to show you with this uh, gridded area what's going to get mirrored over to that section. So if we hit apply mirror, there you go. And so that is this allows you to work smart, not hard. Yep. So you can actually focus on one half of the arena, create the ideal base, yep. mountain, scenario, and you can just paste it over so you don't have to replicate exactly. that. Or if you want to do an asymmetrical map, you can ignore that and just build it yourself. Exactly. So uh, I just put on the grid for the moment because that kind of sort of subdivides it up a little bit so you get a bit of an idea where things are. Now, if I turn on this one again, it shows you where the build barriers are. Now, uh, one of the objects that's haven't been put in just yet is the uh, blockbuster and the collection points for the spawn supply. Feeling generous for those supply crates. Well, the more the merrier, but they alternate, so uh, knowing exactly how you want them to play in the flow. Well, you also might have noticed they've gone into the no man's land. They don't tend to sit outside of that. So the no man's land, can we adjust the size of that? You can. These little sliders here, well, you can just go in and move them and have them however you want. For the moment, the default setup with the size of the map, this kind of this is the one we suggest, but it's entirely up to you how you would like that to play out. Um, so then maybe after we have that, you just go to, uh, I've just saved the button there, so you've got to save the work, press play, and then you can choose your character, choose the team you want to test it on, and press that little button, and it will jump you straight into the map, and you can test your work. So at any point during the process, you can jump in and see how it feels to be a player in your arena. Yes. So as you can see, we do have a spawn, we have a cube, and we can judge the size of the map and how the No Man's Land actually affects the building phase of the game. Exactly. Now on here, on the uh, pause menu, it gives you a couple of default uh, debug options. So when you're testing areas, it gives you a little bit of a uh, uh, speed up to test things a bit more efficiently. So one of the things I would always do is skip the build phase because obviously I'm not going to be building for five minutes. I can drop down the No Man's Land, I can run straight across, and it just gives me a bit of an idea how long it's going to take to get to point. Fantastic. So now you know what it's like to run around in your arena because the worst thing you do is create an arena, not test it, put it out in the wild and players just don't know what's going on exactly. because you haven't tried it yourself. So now we've had a little play in there, we can go back to the actual editing screen and you can act upon your feelings about your arena immediately. So say we wanted to publish this now, of course it might not be the most popular, no offense, because mm. it is it's a bit on the bare side. But before we press that publish button, what are the five top tips you would give to make a successful arena? So on your map settings itself, you want a, 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 a good name that yeah. is potentially reflective of what content you're going to be playing. Uh, a map description, not too heavy on text, but just something enough in there to give a, another a idea of what you're trying to present. Yeah. Saying grabby but short and simple. Yeah. And you have, uh, uh, you might want to stick an ambience in there. So we have background audio? Yeah, we have different selections here for some of our more established maps. Uh, and you can change the time of day you wanted. So if I wanted to, I could make it night time. So it makes that things look very, very dark, very, oh, very spooky. quickly. Um, let's have a look. Why is that gone like that? There we go. It's overcast. Just looks like Britain now, doesn't it? Yeah, very, very drab. And you can also change your 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 planes here. So you can move your planes up further and higher. If you might remember from the beginning, we, we put this sort of uh, granite on the ground floor. This is effectively to kind of give you a good solid base to play on. So we would adjust the, the plane up to the right level and then you might, the kill plane will stick with the, this acid because obviously that's going to kill you. You've got a map image here, you can change that around. So the presentation was always the key thing because if you want somebody to bite on your map to sort of say, oh, I'm going to test that, I'm going to play that, you would want to have your map image a good name and a good description before you even get started to get to get to pull somebody in. Exactly. It's like when you go to a cake shop, you look for the tastiest looking cake before you take a bite. Yeah, but you're not allowed to lick them though. No, this is true. And that goes for the same for our custom made arenas. Yeah. And so we know that you need to have a catchy name, a catchy but short description. You want to have ambience and lighting and also the objectives. Make sure you've placed objectives. Otherwise we won't let you publish it because you need these core elements in the game. And not only that, I remember you telling me that they need to face the right way. Yes, so it should automatically do with the mirror tool, but uh, you see this little red bit stuck out the front? That will tell you the direction that these 
actually come in. So you, you don't necessarily have to have them facing forward, but normally in a, in a good starter map, if you have it faced in the direction of the objective or facing down the battlefield, the better. Um, as you've seen in, a, a, in some of our other arenas, your spawn areas become more elaborate. They have multiple exits in and out. We have more than one objective, so you have to then start thinking about where you want to place those. And then, you know, as soon as you've got something in situ, you just kind of come in with a big talk, big brush, and you can sort of start sculpting it and start making it however you want. And of course, the fifth tip, and arguably the most important, which you brought up earlier, was ensure you put steel blocks under the key objectives, such yes. as respawns and cubes. And uh, I think the, the other thing you can do, if you really you want to play safe, I mean, I tend to do it on, on a lot of the maps that I, I work on, is just making sure that this turns into a, like a great big pillar. So you can kind of go like that. And now what that would do, I'll just show you as an example, that would go all the way down to the bottom. Now, if that was metal, you have a metal pillar support, and then what that would do was sort of stop um, people like Astrella putting the sneaky beakies underneath the map. So you kind of just, you can work, you can, there's no real fixed things to do. It's just that it's suggested we do this to make your life and the player's life a lot more easier when they start to come to play. So we've basically just scratched the surface of what mm. the map editor does and can do. And that's because it's down to you, the player, to really discover it and create things not even we've seen before. You've played our arenas for the last year, and now it's your turn to create the next great thing. Thank you for joining us on this introduction to the Block and Load Map Editor. I've been Jono, he's been Googly Wah. We look forward to seeing what you come up with.